Thomas yes. from Noisite. 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 Noisite Instruments. Yes. Yeah. How are you today, Thomas? You okay? Thanks. I'm fine. How are you doing? Yeah. Good. Yeah. I'm good, man. Uh, what have you got? To, what have you got to show for us at Super? I think uh, the most interesting this year is the Quasar module. This is a binaural audio processor for Eurorack format. Um, binaural means that you don't you can experience a panning with headphones where you don't only have left and right but you also have uh, front and back localization or if the sound comes more from the top or from below or if it's farther away or closer to yourself. Um, it features two mono audio inputs and the output is always stereo. Um, so it, the, the effect works best on headphones, so which is why you also have a dedicated headphone output here with ded dedicated headphone volume, but you also have classic left and right audio output. Um, the module features two engines, they're called Quasar 1 and Quasar 2, um, that are totally independent and the engine means that you can look, uh, place sound virtually around you, so you can um, tell the angle, you can tell the height, so this is angle in the horizontal plane, angle in the vertical plane, you can change the parameter here. The display always shows uh, the parameter name of whatever the encoder uh, is controlling. And the menu is super simple, you have a main menu here, uh, and for example change the Quasar 1 engine or Quasar 2 engine, Quasar 1 engine, so if you have the uh, parameters here like uh, angles and the distance. We have an integrated reverb which is super important for localization especially to judge the distance parameter. Uh, the room can also have two parameters like damping and size so you can shape it a little bit to the sound which fits best. Um, and you have very extensive possibilities for internal modulation. So there, there are internal LFOs. Since the latest firmware, they, LFOs can also be uh, clock synchronized, as you also have two CV inputs, which can be used very generic. Um, you can have one-shot LFOs, you have uh, random LFOs that, that maybe you have, let's say, a drum clap as the audio input and with each clap you put a trigger into the CV1 for example and then you have the clap appear from a different position every time it occurs. Um, Excellent. They're, they're, uh, they're wonderful looking modules. Thank Absolutely you. Absolutely beautiful. <laughs> that was the goal. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And, um, yeah, well, um, what made you kind of make a spatial audio modular? Uh, module? um, when I was studying at the university in my hometown in, in Munich, I studied electronics engineering. I was working in the audio department a lot and had to deal with the uh, recording these kind of transfer functions and also had some, um, some master and bachelor thesis where I helped the students take their recordings or also fill the code together and make it of one whole piece. So that's where I, I was coming from and I'm very much into how these kind of algorithms work. So it was a very intuitive step for me to, make, to bring this to the Eurorack world, yeah. And what's, actually, and what's actually going on like behind the scenes? Like what, what, how are you processing it? Um, well, I think uh, a very good use case is that you don't necessarily feed the whole mix, but that you have, when you make music, you have one, two, three main elements that you want to place spatially, so that you get a wider image of the whole thing. And with wide image, I don't only mean that you widen up your stereo, but you add an, another level of depth just as we as humans we are able to, to localize sounds because of the shape of our ears and because of the shape of our body and the goal is to make use of this and to bring this um, this effect back to classic stereo listening yeah, yeah. And, so, and, and so what for you would be like a practical application if you're making music or if you're making experimental music yeah. what, what would what kind of sounds would you process basically um, personally I like most um, recordings of uh, like field recordings because the more natural the sound is and natural in terms of it occurs in nature uh, the better we are used to the sound so the whole thing of lo sound localization is a psychoacoustic thing and in contrary, 
100% uh, synthesized sound. You have no idea if it's close, if it's far away, because you can't compare it to anything. It, it still works with the module very well, and you get a rough idea, but it, when you add, like, uh, have little glitchy noises and this kind of stuff, then you, uh, the impression is a lot better to my taste. Um, yeah, I think it's it's good for adding another layer of ambience to the whole thing. Yeah. So uh, yeah, let's just have a listen yes. to uh, what the module can do. All right, so we're working on this one at the moment. Uh, we have the stripping sound coming from the front. So I'm turning the angle now on the horizontal plane. So we turn it more to the left. I turn it to the back. The sounds come over from the back, from the right. Um, I can change the distance and, for example, also add some more room. So now it seems like a really big wet hole. I change the height. Now it's coming more from above, more from the lower. And I'm getting it closer now. I can also, for example, activate some auto rotation so that I don't have to turn it on manually. And for example, when I go here, I can select several LFO waveforms. There are really a pretty large amount of them. I just take the side wave here, uh, let it go to the angle parameter. And you can see that on top of the auto rotation, there's also a side wave of light. So this is a super simple way to create movement internally. And we haven't even used the CVs yet. Yeah. Yeah. So you can yeah. get uh, like an organic, organic yes, kind of movement. Absolutely. With it. Yeah. There's also a, a matrix mixer for the input. So when I have input one, I'm just using input one at the moment as a model input. I can distribute input one to the first engine with like I can set the level. And for example, there's also a center position where we have the unprocessed sound coming through. Um, and we can also set the low pass or high pass filter here. And if I take, let's say, I have a drum loop and I want to have the kick centered in the middle, then I can have a low pass filter here uh, so that the kick stays in the center and have only the heights uh, fly around uh, at the virtual position. A bit like mid side processing. Yes. A bit like mid side. Yes. Uh, no. Uh, mid, mid somewhere else processing. <laughs> Uh, I can also say input one doesn't only go to the first engine, it also goes to the second engine. And the second engine, uh, the Quasar 2, has a totally different position. For example, Quasar 2 may be really close and come from, I don't know, from here. While Quasar 1 is cycling around, and so you can mix it together, just take maybe a different sample and so are these available are these available now yes they are available um, most stores are constantly sold out because <laughs> people seem to really like this module but we are uh, shipping about 80 modules per month worldwide so you can, whether you're in the US or in Europe or wherever you can you can get a module. At the moment, I think you will probably have to take a pre-order, but these pre-orders shouldn't take too long to be fulfilled as we, yes, we have very constant output and I'm working really hard to enhance this amount of output at the moment. So don't be worried and don't be afraid if the, the traffic light is red in the store. <laughs> it will work, yeah. Cool, and in terms of like other modules or your like modular journey, like when did you start designing modules? When did this sort of journey begin for you? Um, well, the company is not that old, it's, it's practically a one-man show <laughs> at the moment. Um, I started, uh, I'm also a music producer and more for techno-electronic music and at some point I was digging into the analog world. I studied electronics and to be honest it has been a very, uh, when I was 18 or 20, then I, this, I was sure that this was my path, that I wanted to join electronics and music making because to me it's all the same like playing Legos, it's the way to be creative. And yeah, now it's, I'm 32 now, and two years ago I, after working at another company I chose to go all in and 
to make this a business for myself, yeah. Excellent. <laughs> well, the modules look absolutely fantastic. They're really eye-catching. Really beautiful, Thank you. sort yeah. of, uh, visually, but also sonically. Yeah. Um, yeah, how much will they be? How much, or how much are they, sorry? Um, the stores have them for around 470 um, euros and US dollars. I think it's the same number around that range that's for, for this one. And this one is for 400 something. The Orbit is a totally different kind of modules. Crusher, uh, Wave Shaper, Multimode Filter. Um, these are available very well at the moment. Um, yeah, the Quasar is the new. Fuck shit. <laughs> At the moment, everybody wants to have, yeah. Great. Well, um, yeah, thank you very much for sharing Thank you. Uh, yeah, it was a pleasure. Yes, thanks a lot.